Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ron Ratner. I'm the Associate Commissioner, Senior Associate Commissioner of the Northeast Conference, and today is our first Geico Google Hangout of the 2015-16 men's basketball season. Uh, today's Google Hangout brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. Please visit geico.com. At this time, I am excited to introduce our first guest. He has had uh, quite the busy week, busy week, a successful week. Uh, newcomer to the conference, a junior forward from LIU Brooklyn. Welcome, Jerome Frank. Good to have you, Jerome. Nice to be here, Ron. All right, so before we get going, let me buzz through your resume from this past week. It's a good one. Uh, you were named NEC Player of the Week, if you didn't know, today. Uh, you asked last week, you averaged 17 points, eight rebounds, over two blocks a game, shot over 55% from the field. Those are great numbers, but uh, more importantly, they came in three wins. Three LIU Brooklyn wins to start the season. First time LIU started with three wins since the championship season, 2010-11, which started everything rolling. But more importantly than the numbers is the role you played down the stretch in, in all three of these games, both offensively and defensively, that helped lead the team to victory. So let's just start. Let's go back to last Monday. Your first game in a Blackbird uniform. You're at Loyola, Maryland. Any jitters coming in? A little scary. What's how's it feel getting back on the court? Yeah, it was a lot of jitters, jitters going in because it's my first game in over a year. I kind of rushed my game a little bit and take my time. So like during like the second half, like during the halftime, my teammates told me to slow down and just like look for the easy buckets, and that's what I did, and I scored. So in the second half, yeah, right. So you got off to a bit of a slow start. You came on in the second half, had some big buckets for the team. You're starting to cruise, though. The team's up 13 points. Looks like, okay, we got this. Then Loyola comes all the way back. Um, you find yourself in a tie game at the end, okay? Loyola has the ball. They're under the LIU basket. What's the huddle like? As L Loyola's calling their play, Jack setting up his defense, Jack Perry. What was it like in that huddle? Man, it was very intense because, you know, the game's on the line. And, like, there's a lot of emotions going on during the time. So all we know is like we got together to say we need one stop and after we get a stop, it's all in God's hands after that. All right, so Loyola comes out and um, having problems finding somebody to inbound the ball. Finally, one of their bigs breaks free. You come off your man uh, to block the shot. Were you on rim protection duty there or was that just an instinct thing where you came off your, your player to go help out? Uh, it was an instinct thing because he was wide open and – me being right there next to the basket, I was the only like only defense left. So I took that chance and I blocked the shot. All right, so you blocked the shot. This this sets off the miraculous chain of events. From the block shot, the ball goes to Martin Hermanson. He doesn't throw one up from half court. He spots Joel Hernandez down the court, makes the pass. He somehow banks it in, uh, poses the whole thing. Uh, and then just like that, that's how Coach Perry planned it, right? Yeah, that's exactly how they planned it. Um, what was the reaction of your friends and family um, seeing that sequence, seeing you on Sports Center, and all the good stuff that came after? Uh, my phone been buzzing all through the block and um, through the finish. I had about, about 30 text messages talking about the, the whole play in the last five seconds, talking about those long, longest five seconds of their lives. But me being on the court, that was the long, longest five seconds of my life. Now, could you have asked for a better first game, a better finish uh, to start your LIU career? Uh, that was the best start I had so far. All right, so let's move on to the next game. Now up comes uh, Maine out of the America East. This one, you're in, you're in the zone offensively in this game. 25 points, only missed two shots all game. Were you start, first home game, too, for you. Um, starting to feel comfortable with your teammates out on the floor offensively? What? Well, were you? That's the question. Yeah, um, because I played with them last year during practice. I know what they were going to do, like like their spots, their sweet spots, and where I'm going to find them on offense. So all I had to do was like find them, and they'll find me, and we just got it clicking from there. So one of those where they found you once was a couple minutes left in the game. Joel Hernandez back. He finds you. He beats his man off the dribble, gets it to you. You dunk. LIU goes up seven. Pretty much clinched the game. 
how does it feel having so many athletic guys in your team that you know can beat their guys, uh, you know, one on one, and then find you, and then you just your job is just to finish them. Yeah, we have so many offensive weapons on our team, so like you have to like pay attention, guard everybody. If you help, you're gonna dish it off because we're an unselfish team. So we just plant exactly how we planned it. <laughs> so now you're two and zero. We're moving on to the weekend. First game at Barkley Center. What was that like? Our first time playing in the NBA arena. You know, I was kind of tired a little bit because the court is so long. But after that, I got my win, my second win. It was history from there. Okay, so you're playing a very good North Carolina Central team. This is a team picked to win the, the MEAC. Last year they were in the NIT. Uh, bigger team, longer team than, than Loyola and um, uh, Maine. Uh, did you know going in how tough this game was going to be? Yes, I know because they, as you said, they was picked to win their league, and they were like much bigger than us. So all we had to do was like trying to box them out on defensive end because I know like on offense we're going to score. We just had to contain the ball and um, block out on defense. Okay, so you're down double digits in the first half. Make a nice run at the end of the first half, cut it to four, but then Central again builds that lead up in the second half. Goes up 12. What's the team mindset at this point? The team mindset was like just to get stops and block out. Because offensive, like offensively, we didn't have to worry about it. We knew we were going to score somehow, some way. All we had to do was just pay attention on the defensive end. So you start to get some stops. Uh, the offense comes, comes around. You hit a big shot with a couple minutes to play. But again, it comes down to the final possessions this game. All right, so you're guarding uh, Jeremiah Ingram on uh, NC Central. About 10 seconds left, he's take, he tries to take you off the dribble from the three-point line. Some really nice footwork. You follow him in, knock that, you swat that ball right out of bounds. As a player, do you relish these sort of one-on-one -on -one type situations when you're on the other end, you're on the defensive end, give you a chance to shine that way? Yes, because I'm, <clears throat> I've been like working on my own. My defensive skills, like sliding my feet and all that, my lateral quickness and all that. So it was a lot of progress going into that. All right, so what happens next? Uh, the ball's out of bounds. Another inbounds play. No timeout here. Five seconds left. Uh, they inbound the ball central. They take a three. They miss. You're blocking out your man, but it's a long rebound. Comes right back to Jeremiah Ingram again. You block his shot. Now it's for the sec the second time in a few seconds, you block his shot, you tap the ball back to yourself, you send it down the court, uh, time expires. Uh, my question to you is, that game had 54 fouls in it, yet in the last two possessions, you managed to block these two shots without a call. Is there, sort of, is there an art form to, to blocking the shot and to playing defense in these sort of situations, or are you just hoping the refs aren't going to call anything? I'm just hoping the refs didn't call anything because the whole game it was calling it tight. So, you know, I just – threw my hands up and the balls hit my hands. So I like I kind of lost the ball and I seen it. So I tapped it to myself. And like I looked at the clock all the way down the other end. I saw like like 1.2 seconds left. So I just decided to check it down the court. So you showed uh, that, again, despite the fact that you did score a lot of points this week, there are other ways to win games. Have you always taken pride in your defense? I know people probably always talk to you about your offense and your rebounding, but do you take pride in your defense? Has that been one of the stronger aspects of your game as you've moved throughout your playing career? Yes, because all throughout my high school and my freshman year and my sophomore year, it was all like strictly about defense. So there are a lot of defensive drills during high school. And yeah, so that's what got me to that point. <laughs> So after the game, I saw a great Instagram picture of you and Joel Hernandez giving you a headlock after the game. How does it feel to be 3-0? Uh, it's a terrific feeling because best start since um, the championship team, 2011-2012. So like a, lot of people, like a lot of people on campus, on campus have been comparing us, like us two, but we just do, like want to play our game, don't live up to the hype and all that. All three of these games have been close. And you've been able to close out all three, which is always the sign of a of a of a good team. Why do you think you and your teammates have excelled under the pressure in these first three games of the season? Um, because on um, during practice we do like situations, like and we're always down like about like double digits. So we just like have to fight our way up and like win the situation during practice. 
LIU now moving on to game four of the season. Here's where the irony comes in. You're going back down to Miami to play Florida International, where you transferred from. How excited are you for this game? I'm really excited because that's why I started that. And mostly all my friends down there have been texting me and say, oh, can't wait to see you play this down the third. You got to win this game, right? This is this is this is big for you, right? Yeah, it's for bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's turn the clock back a bit now. You're a Jersey City product. You played at St. Anthony under Bobby Hurley. I'm sure you get, you've been asked this a million times before, but what did you learn most from Coach Hurley during your St. Anthony days? Man, Coach Hurley's really demanding. Uh, so, like, it was basically like a, a college field, but in high school because he was so demanding. Um, he expressed a lot from us on the defensive end. Because offensively, he was really ta um, talented. Um, we had Kyle Anderson, now drafted to the Spurs, that helped us out a lot. And a like, couple players in like high division, like high division one players. So you won two tournament, of champion, uh, two tournament of champion titles. You play with some great players. You mentioned Kyle Anderson from my San Antonio Spurs. So I'm a big Kyle Anderson fan. Um, how much did playing it at a high level in high school prepare you for the college game? Uh, prepared me physically because mostly all the teams that we played was like a lot tougher and um mostly like every everybody we played i played so far in the college level so i kind of like knew the game what they was going to do and all that by the way how is kyle anderson a good guy yeah he's a very good guy <laughs> you guys still talk to you now that he's in the pros yeah he still does we still communicate did you come up with the slow-mo nickname i know he, he had that already <laughs> All right, it's one of the best nicknames. I love it. Uh, who was the toughest player you went up against in your high school career? I'm sure you played some really good ones. Yes. Um, I would say the toughest one, I had to guard Andrew Wiggins. I, like, I, I haven't heard of him, like, never heard about him, never seen nothing on him, just like highlight tapes. So, like, yeah, that was, he was very athletic. I didn't know he could shoot the ball that well. <laughs> Did he jump over you? Did you get posterized by Andrew Wiggins? No. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> All right, I know you played at a high level in high school, but what was the hardest adjustment to college ball that you found? Um, I would say uh, the conditioning. Because in Miami, we woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I never woke up that early in my life before. <laughs> so we just went on the football field, started running, then get no water or nothing, just started running. Okay, so you made the decision to transfer. Why LIU? Why did you pick uh, the Blackbirds? It was close to home. I knew my family could like drive over and see me play whenever they want. And also my father was like kind of recruited by L um, LIU Brooklyn. So that's one of the reasons why I chose LIU. Awesome. Uh, well, we're glad to have you. But last year when you were sitting out, was that tough? First time in your life not being able to play and just sitting and watching? Yeah, it was tough. Like all throughout my basketball career, I, I was a starter, played starter minutes, never got off the floor. And last year it was it was tough. So I was like kind of like a player coach, like coaching one my teammates what to do during certain, like certain situations. During the year that you sat out, what part of your game did you work on the most to improve for this season? Uh, my shooting skills and like my dribbling, mostly my dribbling because I was going to be like a, a big focal, like one of the big focal points on the team. And I just had to take people off the dribble and create for others. How important is it for you to have a, a multifaceted game, being able to shoot threes, beat people off the dribble, pass the ball, play down in the, in the block, down on the block as well? Uh, um, it was very important because I could be a mismatch nightmare. Had somebody bigger than me could take them off the dribble have somebody smaller than me, I can post them up and score or find my teammates because they're going to double down. You know when somebody calls you a mismatch nightmare that you're a pretty good player, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how has Coach Perry helped you get better as a player? Oh, me and him been, like, going, like, been watching film from my FIU, my FIU career. And he, like, pointed out my defensive flaws. So he, like, been in the gym working on me with my defense. Okay, so uh, you're on LIU now. There's a team that has a pretty good history. They won three straight titles. Last two years have been more of about a, a rebuild for uh, LIU. Uh, this year you're picked fourth in the preseason poll. 
You're a very young team, no seniors on this roster. Despite being so young, is this a team that can be a contender and challenge for the title at, years, at the year's uh, end in March? Uh, yes, I believe so, because we're very competitive. Uh, we know what to do, we know how to get the job done, and we know like uh, what Coach Perry wants. How much confidence have these three wins given your team as you enter the next wave of non-conference games? Uh, they give us a big boost of confidence. Um, we've been talking like, uh, don't worry about this game. It's the next game after that, the next game after that. So don't like sit on the, um, the win too long. We got another, like we have time to work in the gym. What does LIU need to do better in order to keep this uh, streak alive or just to have success? Uh, I believe we need to work on containing the ball and blocking out more because uh, from here on out, until conference play, everybody's like kind of taller and more physical than us. So we just got to block out and contain. I'm intrigued by your point guard, another newcomer, Akeem Santil. Okay, this is a guy super quick, gets to the rim. He's a he's pesty defensively. He gets his hands on a lot of balls, a lot of deflections. Uh, am I right here? Do you enjoy playing with this guy? Yeah, I enjoy playing with him. I played with him during uh, my freshman year, no, my sophomore year, by using uh, a freshman in, in St. Anthony's. So I knew of him. I knew of his capabilities, and I knew he was going to be a big part as soon as he came in. It's a good addition for the team. And I'm also I, – is Martin Hermanson the first guy from Iceland you've played with? I got to think so, right? Yeah, he's the first guy. <laughs> Tell me a bit about him. I interviewed him last year. I found him to be a, a great interview. Tell me a little bit about Martin Hermanson. Uh, well, he's basically like a pro in, in Iceland, so he knows how to get the job done. He will do it to the best of his, of his abilities, and he has a really high basketball IQ. How important is Nurizana to the success of this team? Oh, he's very important. You know, big physical, physical guy. Um, he can match up with the big guys. He's learning how to um, take big guys off the dribble, and he's learning that um the fifteen that fifteen shot. 15 foot shot. Good, really nice nucleus, deep team here at LIU. Um, let's. I'm going to wrap things up soon. Got a few more questions for you. Is there a player that you model your game after? Uh, yes, I model my game after like Carmelo Anthony, but not the defensive kind. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, there's offensive game. There's no problems there. Yes. All right. Good. Uh, what are you, any off the court hobbies? What do you enjoy doing when you're not? Uh, doing basketball or uh, studying. I like hanging out with my teammates, so like team bonding things, uh, just sit in my room, just chill, watch movies. But, what, uh, do you plan, what do you plan to major in? I'm planning on uh, sports, science, sports science. Excellent. And now after you graduate, what's the game plan? Uh, see what I can do with sports science, my sports science degree, or um, try to go overseas or try to make it to the pros. One of those, one of those three. Excellent. Uh, here's your chance. I like giving guys a chance to do a commercial for their school. Why should all college-bound students go to LIU? Tell me why LIU Brooklyn's a great place to be. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things to do on campus. Um, everybody's a tight-knit family here on campus. Um, the Barclays Center is right down the street. Uh, there's a pier we could go to also right that's also down the street, and um. They also build the mall here, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> you got, hey, that's a lot of reasons. That's good. The marketing department from LIU has got to get on this. Jerome told us why we <laughs> should all go to LIU. All right, the next time you can see Jerome and the Blackbirds this Wednesday, a little uh, Thanksgiving appetizer for everybody. Going down to Miami, going to play his old school at FIU, and it's actually going to air here in the New York City area on SNY. So everybody will be able to watch it, all your friends and family. Maybe you block some more shots at the end of the game. Who knows? Um, okay. Jerome, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it, too. Thank you. All right. So I want to wish you a great Thanksgiving. Hopefully I'll catch you at a game um, this year and say hello. Um, good luck to you and your teammates. All right. Thank you. All right, today's Google Hangout was brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. Please visit GEICO.com. This is Ron Rander from the Northeast Conference. I'll see you next time on our GEICO Google Hangout.